Warren Buffett did an interview with Charlie Rose last week. And so what I want to do in this video is react to some of the things that he said. And uh, the full video is in the description below. If you're new to this channel, my name is Maris Skoniecznik. I run Microcap Explosions, a website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote about 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. I also created Value Investing University as a free resource to make you a more intelligent investor. What is it you enjoyed the most about it? Because you, you don't pick stocks, you pick companies. Yeah, that's but when I was when I was 11, I picked stocks. I had the whole wrong idea. I, uh, I was interested in watching stocks and I thought stocks were things that went up and down and I charted them. I read books on technical analysis. I read I, I read Edwards and McGee. I think that was the classic then. I'm hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. And I read that whole thing over and over again. And I read Garfield, Drew, and all of us. I read everything. And I thought the first eight years, I thought the important thing was to pr predict what a stock would do and predict the stock market. And then I read Ben Graham, you know, when I was 19 or 20. And I realized that, that I was doing it exactly the wrong way. And, but it didn't hurt that I had that background and everything. And I rejiggered my mind and when I read the book, The Intelligent Investor, and at, from that point, I never bought another stock. I bought businesses that happened to. Okay, so, so think about this for a second. The guy is 90 something years old, right? 91 or something like that. And he's been doing this for about 80 years. And so we have all this knowledge, okay? And yet, as a society, we learned zero, nothing. Whatever he did for the first eight years, he was buying stocks, right? Technical analysis, triangles, velocity, head and shoulders, all of that nonsense. It took him eight years to realize that it was dumb. And then he read Benjam, Benjamin Graham's book and became a true investor and started investing in businesses instead of stocks. And we have all this information available, all these teachings. And what do we do as society? What do we do as young people? We buy stocks, we predict prices, we use astrology to predict what other people are going to do. We do everything but focus on what's important, which is businesses. You don't need to be a genius in what I do. That's the good thing about it. If I went into physics or something, I'd, a whole lot of other subjects, I'd be an also ran. But I am in a game that you don't need. You probably need 120 points of IQ, you know. But, you, but 170 doesn't do any better than 120. It may do worse, probably do worse. But, but uh, you don't really need brains. What you, do you need? You need the right orientation. You know, 90% of the people, I'm pulling a figure out of the air, but 90% of the people that buy stocks don't think of them the right way. They think about something that they hope goes up next week. <laughs> and they think about the market as something they hope goes up. And if it's down, they feel worse. I feel better. And you think about? Pardon me? And what do you think about? I think about what the company's going to be worth 10 or 20 years from now. I don't think I need to say anything. This is self-explanatory. Do you have, you have a competitive spirit, clearly. Yeah. Clearly. Well, but you gotta be, you gotta be careful about what you compete in. You know, it's a good thing I don't have a competitive spirit in chess or, you know, you know or football or anything like that. No, no, I just, I'm, 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 I'm an observer there. I, I enjoy watching things like that. But I, I try to keep my competitive spirit in a game where I can win. So that's the, that's the main thing about competitive spirit. In, in our world today, it's glorified when someone says, oh, I'm so competitive. And I hate to think my, of myself, for example, as competitive. I want to go where there's very little competition. 
That's why I focus on micro cap stocks because there's very little competition. So Buffett competes in an in an in a big cap game. Why? Because he has so much money. But that's not where he wants to be. He's forced to be there. So I don't want to be there because there's too much competition there. I want to be where I am, which is where there's very little competition and my efforts can get me huge results. Exactly. I, I've got, and I wouldn't call it a killer instinct, but I do, I do know this. When I want to do something, I always want to do it big. I mean? put my whole net worth in city service preferred, you know. <laughs> $120. $114.75. Right. <laughs> I put my whole net worth in, in, and I've never, since I was, well, since that day, in, you know, March 11th, uh, 1942, I have never had less than 80% of my money in American business. You can call them stocks. Or but equities. I, but I see them as American business. I, I've owned a piece of American business for eight, at least 80% at all times. In, you know, I, I just, I don't want to own anything else. <laughs> I, I want to own a home and you know things my family wants and all that. But owning five homes doesn't mean anything to me because I'm, <laughs> I can be happy in one home and, and there's a certain amount of things that go wrong with everything. <laughs> so can you imagine parents or teachers to tell you what exactly what he's telling you? Like, if you want to do something, do something big. Like, no, when it comes to fin financial stocks or small cap stocks, oh, no, 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 make sure you don't, make sure you don't, you don't go too heavy because you might get too rich. Like, oh, oh you know, it's too dangerous. I would have to be honestly say that, that, that what makes me happiest is what I'm doing, what I'm doing. You know, I, 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 Allocating I, I enjoy two things about it. One, I know I'll win over time. That doesn't mean I'll beat everybody else or anything like that. But I'll, I, I, I mean, the game is very, very, very easy if you have the right lessons in your mind about what you're buying. I'm not buying stocks. I'm buying pieces of overwhelmingly American business. 100% agree. This game is very, very easy if you buy the right companies and if you have the right mentality. Very easy. If you buy the wrong businesses, awful businesses, and you don't have it up here, it's really tough. We expect the Fed will raise the rates. Does it remind you of 1970s? Everything, in, everything in, that happens in the investment world reminds me of something or other. I mean, every day. If it's a boring day, it reminds me of something. I mean, there, but... Uh, I don't. I don't think that way. I, I'm, all I'm trying to do is buy businesses. I, I, let's pretend there is no stock market. Let's say I had to buy these privately, like you buy a farm privately, like you buy an apartment house privately. They're investments. So you're looking to say, what can I do with money I've saved to put it away, so I feel good about getting it back later under any circumstances, but not necessarily on a given moment. But if I have a farm, it's going to take me a while. But I, I, it is, people would be so much better if they, if they actually didn't have a stock market in terms of buying businesses. But So this comes again to the point of like interest rates. He's not even thinking about it, right? He's not even thinking about it. Yet everybody else cannot shut up talking about interest rates, what the Fed is going to do. Again, everybody is focusing on the nonsense instead of focusing on the things that actually matter, which is the businesses that you buy. But doing the job that you do, allocating capital. I, I can actually do that as well as ever. As ever. Yeah, that, that sounds odd. But, 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 but better than that, do you do it today better than you did it 20 years ago? No, yeah, I've got a different set of opportunities. And that gives you, you obviously, well, Berkshire is much bigger yeah, and than that it's ever been, and that therefore that defines that the choices. The size restricts the, the kind of things that can have an important effect on what I can do for the people who leave the money with me. So I, I am a 
I can't earn the returns on capital with 500, you know, billion or 600, you know, whatever it may be to work with. Like, if I do something brilliant, don't count on it, <laughs> with, with $5 billion, it's 1% of my net worth. I mean, 1% of the net worth of people I'm working with. Uh, and 1% doesn't move much, you know. Uh, so I, I have to think about big things. And they're limited. I mean, you know, I, I, I made money in an entirely different way when I was working with originally $10,000. He made money in a completely different way when he had less money versus when he's managing so much money. This is the entire philosophy of mine just in this sentence when you have small amounts of money the opportunities and the rate with which you can compound your money is completely different than what you can do when you have a lot of money that's it that's my secret small amount of money i invest in small companies because i can make a killing as my capital grows i'm going to have to move into bigger opportunities and I'm not going to be able to compound my money as fast as I can compound it today. That's it. I have nothing else to say in this video.